Hey, this is Joe, and in this video we're going to talk about solenoids, in particular 12-volt solenoids that are usually used in automotive applications. We have a meter, which we're going to use the continuity tester to test uh, for a valid path or continuity through a circuit. We have a good solenoid. This is brand new. I just purchased this off of Amazon. We have a 30-year-old solenoid that is bad. So in this video, we're going to talk about what a solenoid does, how it works, and how to test a bad solenoid. Then we're going to tear the bad solenoid apart and try to determine why the solenoid failed. The first question we have to ask ourselves is what is a solenoid? A solenoid is an electrically controlled switch. Just like a switch in your house, you turn the switch on, current can flow through the circuit and turn on your lights. A solenoid does the exact same thing but with a little bit of difference. The solenoid consists of three terminals, actually four. You have two large terminals right here where current can flow through. You have a small terminal and the casing of the solenoid acts as the fourth terminal which is your ground. How, you, how do you turn on a solenoid? You run current between this small terminal through ground and that in return allows current, much larger current, to flow through the large terminals here. For example, in your car, when you try to start your car, you put the key in, you turn the key, and it cranks the starter and starts your engine of your vehicle. You can use a very small amount of current between this terminal and ground to energize this solenoid, which then closes the circuit, creates a valid circuit, and then it allows very high current through the solenoid to the starter of your car to crank the motor to start your motor. Now, how does it do that? A solenoid in this little container has a lot of wire wrapped around a piston, a metal piston. And when you apply current through the wire inside this canister, and that wire is in the shape of a coil, it applies a magnetic field to that coil of wire. And the piston inside then is attracted by the magnetic field and then moves the piston in a position where it then closes these contacts and allows current to flow through these large terminals. The minute you remove the current through the small terminal and ground, the contacts open and the current stops flowing. The benefit of using a solenoid is you can use a very small amount of current from your battery to trigger the magnetic field in this solenoid so that you can pass very large amounts of current through the solenoid like in the case of your starter on your vehicle. So I've turned on the meter. We put the meter in continuity mode which basically is just a mode to determine whether we have a completed circuit that current can flow through. How we do that is if we touch the meter leads you'll notice the beep. The beep indicates that current is flowing through the entire circuit. If there's no beep, that means the circuit is open and current can't flow. So in the default state here, or when the solenoid is not energized, there should be no current being able to flow through these large terminals. Now let's test this out. So if we take the meter and we touch the large terminals, we notice there's no beeping, so there's no possible current can flow through this solenoid. That's pretty much how the solenoid works, by applying a small current. So how do you test a solenoid to make sure that it's working properly? Well, you can use your meter. So for example, if we touch the mounting point here, and we touch the rest of the container, you notice it beeps. That means this entire case, including the brackets, are connected together and when they're attached to the vehicle, they make a contact through the vehicle's ground, which is a common point in a vehicle. 
And as we said, unless there's current flowing through that coil of wire, we have no completed circuit. So there's a couple things we can do to test. One I just showed you, we want to make sure that we have no current flowing through these terminals or no conductivity when no current is flowing through the solenoid. Another thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the casing, the ground point of the solenoid, is not shorted to the terminal. So we, we take one lead of the meter, we touch it to the casing, we touch the other meter to one of the terminals, then we switch and do the other side. One meter lead is touching the casing, and, it's touch, and then we touch the other terminal to make sure that we're not shorting the terminals between ground. The other one, the other test we want to make is our small current terminal. We want to touch that and we want to then touch again one of the leads, the larger leads, and we want to make sure no current can flow or no continuity is flowing through this connection. Then we test the other side. Again, this is proper. No current can flow through there. But now, what happens if we touch the small terminal and the ground? And that's anywhere. That means that this terminal has a direct path between the solenoid and ground. So this is the path that when we want to in to energize the solenoid, we have to pass current between this point and ground, which then operates the coil, it energizes the coil, and the magnetic field attracts the piston to move the piston into a location where current can then flow between the two large terminals. Now let me show you how that works. I have a power supply set to 12 volts and we can put one lead on the small terminal we can take the other lead and we can put it to the casing of the solenoid now when I turn on the power supply listen for the click and if you heard that click that means the magnetic field created by current flowing between the small terminal and ground energize the solenoid. Now if we touch the two large terminals we now have a pathway for current to flow through the solenoid. So that's how a solenoid is supposed to properly work. Here we have a bad solenoid. This solenoid was pulled off of my uh, bus conversion project. And this solenoid is 30 years old. So I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot with a meter and we can determine if this solenoid is good or bad. So like we did with the new solenoid, if we touch the two terminals with no current going through the solenoid, we don't get a complete path or a complete circuit through the solenoid, so we get no beep. Okay, next thing we want to do, let's check the ground to make sure we have a good ground connection. And notice the case and the mounting points have a good connection and we get the beep. So again, the only way we can turn on this solenoid is by putting power or current flowing through the small terminal and ground. So now let's check and see if we have continuity between the case and one of the terminals. If we did, that means the case would be shorted or the ground would be shorted to one of the terminals and that's bad. We don't want that. We can do the same thing on the other side. Touch the ground and touch the other terminal. And no connectivity. So there's no path from ground to the terminal. That's a good thing. Now like I showed you in the new solenoid, 
we want current to be able to flow from the small terminal to ground so we can create that magnetic field inside the solenoid. So if we touch the small terminal and ground, notice we do not get any beep, so there's no continuity between this terminal and ground. So that means, and I'll show you how we can verify that by running current through these two points. Now by playing around, if I touch this probe to here, there's no continuity, so there's no connected circuit between this point and this point, which is good. We want that. Now if I do the other point, notice that there is a pathway between the small terminal and the large terminal, which is not good. That means there is a short between this terminal and one of the larger terminals. There's not supposed to be any circuit or connection between this point and this point. Let's go ahead and also remember when we turned on the power supply, the solenoid clicked, which means that we energize the magnetic field and we moved the piston into a position which allowed a pathway to be formed between here and here. Let's turn on the power supply. Notice we did not get a click, so we did not energize the magnetic field inside the solenoid. And we can verify that by touching the two large terminals. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this out to my shop. We're going to cut the top because these solenoids, when they're manufactured, they're pressed fit into a solid unit where no moisture can get inside. So we're going to take this solenoid, we're going to cut the top off, and we're going to take a look inside and see if we can determine the two points where the circuit is being shorted to the case here and not connected properly between this terminal and the casing which is supposed to be a straight through pathway so I'll be back in a second a few moments later we've cut the top off the solenoid it's rather interesting inside as you notice here there's a spring and there's a metal piston and at the very bottom here there's a copper copper ring if you look inside you'll see there's some big copper lugs here and those lugs are going to the large terminals when we create a magnetic field in the coil of wire down here it then creates that magnetic field which pulls this plunger or this piston down to make contacts with the two large lugs. Let's test this out. So we have the meter there. So let's put this here. Try to hold this with hand. Now if I push the plunger down So now you see that that piston, when the magnetic field is around the coil, creates a mag magnetic attraction which pushes the piston down. Now let's try to take the meter and determine where that short is. We may or may not be able to get the coil out, but we're gonna, I'm going to give it a try without damaging the wires. I don't want to damage the wires because then we won't be able to see where the actual short is, but we'll give it a shot here. Okay, we're looking down inside the solenoid here. We found something rather interesting. If you notice, there's a coil wire there, and there's a coil wire there. If we check the continuity between that coil wire, so this solenoid is wired just a bit differently 
on the new solenoid the small terminal was connected to the coil and the other portion of the coil was connected to the ground here and when we ran a current through that those two terminals it would then pop the piston down and make contact in this particular solenoid the coil is running between this terminal and this terminal when you have a completed circuit of current between these two then the piston drops down and makes contact across here so this solenoid is wired significantly different than the new solenoid that I purchased but in looking at this it appears to still work the same way it's just which two wires are receiving the current it appears that if we receive a current between that terminal which was connected to one of the door wires and this terminal it completes the circuit pops down the piston and then it allows current to flow through the large terminal so principle is the same just two different terminals are doing that so what we have to do now is further investigate uh, in our circuit if this difference in wiring is going to impact the solenoid how it's wired presently and uh, what fixes we have to do to my vehicle because of what I'm trying to do uh, and if you saw the other the other video with this solenoid I'm trying to bypass this solenoid and and not require it to eliminate the uh, door interlock safety circuit on the bus that I'm restoring that's going to be reserved for another video but just to show you here two different solenoids are wired entirely differently but they function pretty much the same way in allowing current to flow between the two large terminals it's just dependent upon where the smaller terminal is which terminal it's connected to either the ground in the new solenoid we looked at versus this older solenoid between the small terminal and the left hand side of the large terminal indirectly I've showed you how to test solenoids for proper operation in this particular case though we would have to uh, somehow try to find a specification on how the solenoid is wired and if you look very closely there is no serial or part numbers on this solenoid I've taken the rest of the solenoid apart here's the uh, casing which is the ground and we have little insulator pieces that go on the casing to uh, insulate the l terminal lugs and notice they also have little plastic pieces to make sure that the terminal lugs do not ground out to the casing this is the front lug and this lug connects to here's your coil connects to this lead of the coil here's your coil the other lug goes to in this case the left hand side of the terminal lug so hope you enjoyed this video we'll see you next time